Okay, so now there's a question about the PE study, so pulmonary pulmonary embolism. And what's your question? I'm not gonna take a blue bag. What's your question? So my question is, how do I adjust technical factors if I know the patient has a large heart or has a large body habitus, they're gonna either take a long time or my scan I know is going to be too grainy to get diagnostic quality. Mm -hmm. So my thing is, this is how I do it, um, is I just highlight all of this. And you already know that this patient's gonna, they have a big mass, so they're on the heavier side. Either they have big breasts or they're just really large or big boned and maybe one arm can't go up. Both arms can't go up and one arm can and stay down. So that's a factor too. So if you have an arm in the way, that means it's more, um, anatomy and more penetration that you have to go through. So what I would do in this case for a larger patient, you just highlight everything and all you have to do is just click on the top or the bottom and then just highlight all of it. Click uh, the left button down and then just highlight and then you're going to go to scan details and this is before any scan. This is before the scalp. Before the scalp, you just highlight everything and you already know, change this to a higher KB and then you're done you don't have to do anything else because let's say you do do something so you go to scan details and then now you don't have an effective mask right, because have good morning. thank you you too appreciate right. you guys so effective mask there is no effective mask because the machine is going to calculate with the ap and lateral they're going to calculate how much um penetration that needs to go through so it's like what do you call it that a a e d a e c a e yeah i think so right it calculates automatic calculation yeah. and okay so that it doesn't have it here and yes you can increase or decrease your rotation time but you don't want to only because this is a triggered scan because you're gonna have your SNV and then you're gonna have your sure start, so you have your ROI and it's gonna trigger. So you don't know when it's gonna go, when it's gonna happen, and you want that bolus, that contrast bolus that's gonna go in at four. Um, you want that contrast bolus to continuously go in, and then it's gonna take 3.4 seconds to kind of get that scan of the chest through, right? It's not gonna be 3.4 because this is gonna, this is gonna change according to how much. Um, mass that it's gonna get from the patient so literally all you have to do is highlight all of it in the beginning and put it to three 135 you're bumping something up it's not going to be the best because you can't really control your mass um but it's something to give it a little oomph you know what i mean because obviously you're not gonna i don't think it's gonna be 112 dlp that seems too low. But yeah, so does that kind of answer your question? Yes, that, that helps a lot to, uh, to preemptively take care of some of those factors. Yeah, but when it comes to like um, abdomen and stuff, then you would adjust that like we did the head. Okay. Like, you'll go to abdomen and it kind of does this, but you'll do this after the after scouts. the scouts and stuff. You'll just adjust, you'll look at your effective mass afterwards and adjust that. Um, some people will just change this, but this is like too far in depth. So let's just stick with the basics first. Because <laughs> so. then you have um, how much thickness and blah, 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 and details and stuff. So what if I'm in a standard PE study, I get my scouts, I see they have a huge heart. Is there any technical factors that would need to be changed in that case? For a huge heart, like cardiomegaly, it's just cardiomegaly. There's no, it's more of the skin tissue, the bones and stuff that you have to go through. Your heart's going to be your heart. Okay. Um, so it's more of the body habitus that'll affect the image quality on scan details? Yes. Okay. Um, whereas contrast is something you have to look into too because it depends on where the IV is, right? Where the IV is on the patient. If you have a central line, 
it's going to hit the heart faster. If you have it on your arm, it's going to get to your heart a lot longer. So that's why you have your, your sure starts at five seconds because it takes about 10 seconds from a peripheral IV, like your AC, to get to your heart. So from the IV from your AC to get to your heart, it takes about 10 seconds for that to go through. So this is already going to wait that five seconds. So it's going to wait five seconds and then it's going to hit and then it's going to start monitoring when that when that contrast is going to hit and once it hits the pulmonary then it goes and then you stop your contrast but then if it's in the central line so if it's in the central line it's a lot closer to the heart and obviously it's a central line so it's already in the artery in the vein and it's just going to go straight to that so you do want to change your sure start to like three or something or else i'll miss it or else it'll be too quick yeah and it'll be late yeah you'll okay. miss it yeah. interesting okay got it and that then of course the hounds field this is the hounds field the pulmonary artery is going to trigger so the contrast will go into the artery uh, into the pulmonary and when the roi hits that amount that 180 hounds field then it'll trigger and tell the machine to start scanning. So that's the trigger point. That's another thing I did not take into consideration is central line versus in the AC. Even in the hand, like you could do the hand still, but it's gonna take a, even a little longer. Yeah. See, I, don't, I have not thought about those yeah. factors playing into how long it's gonna take. So question for you, can you do a PE study on a foot IV? No. Why not? One, it takes too long, and two, it hits from a direction that's not going to be helpful for the study? No. So the answer is yes. You can use a foot IV. If that's the only IV they have, you can use a foot IV to do a PE study as long as it's the right gauge. So as long as it's a 20 gauge IV, then you are able to do a PE study with the foot IV because it's going to take longer so what I would do is maybe change that to like 10 seconds or something longer right so it's going to take longer to hit but it'll eventually remember everything gets dumped into your heart wherever the IV is it's going to get dumped into your heart the only IV we cannot use is the is the IJ right no. the peripheral IJ you cannot use that. But if it's a central line, it's in the line, then you can use it, but not a peripheral IJ. Okay. And um, so technique will still be the same. You want to go at four. If they're bigger, you want to go at five or whatever. So four or five. And then this is going to take longer. So if it's in the foot, the foot IV is just going to take way longer. It's going to come up. So remember, this is like 10 seconds. And then we already have that at five. So if it's coming from here, it's going to take maybe a little... Like, I would maybe go to, like, 12 or whatever. But it'll eventually hit. It's not good. It might not be the best. But if that's our only option, it'll do. So when do you go from 4 to 5 on here? Um, if they really have a good IV, like an 18-gauge, like an 18-gauge, a really good 20-gauge will go. Um, but new, normally, I would do it on bigger patients. Like, maybe 300-plus or something. Or then I could go plus. to a 5 then I would go at five. Um, Cause you want that to go in quickly. Even some pregnant people, because their heart rate is different and they have a baby inside. And apparently, unfortunately, a lot of pregnant people will come in for chest pains and they're concerned for embolism in their pulmonary. So you would have to, um, get that done okay. I mean go a little faster because with the rhythm of the heart for some reason sometimes pregnant people don't have really good um, heart rates a little more sluggish yeah so it helps to kind of give it that little oomph okay. so, to push it through but not always if they're little I would still if they're cause small like pregnant women I would still go in at four or whatever okay. and then just stop it whenever it's done so five is good for um Bigger Much patients, yeah. Patients. Okay. Bigger patients and good IV. Oh. Yeah, because it's just going to go straight through and 
but you know, a four is good. It'll get there. Yeah. All right, so that's your PE study.